Stormwater is an issue here in Fairfax County because we're a heavily developed county. We also, of course, have regulations that say we have to keep our water clean to a certain standard. And because we're heavily developed, we have a lot of infrastructure, and a lot of it's old. Buildings, roads, houses, um, and lawn areas, quite honestly, carry a lot, have a lot of nutrients that run off. So as the stormwater runs off those surfaces, it often runs off very quickly. It carries a lot of nutrients and pollutants, and it heads down to our streams where it gouges out the stream channels, mobilizing sediment. And that, of course, is another problem pollutant for the streams themselves and for the Chesapeake Bay. So we have a mandate to clean that water, so we really want to capture it, hold it, slow it down, and cool it, and clean it in the process. And a critical component was the establishment of a funding mechanism. In this case, it's a tax, and it's based on the real estate tax in the county. So the voters voted for it, and the, the Board of Supervisors have been tremendously, support, tremendously supportive in instituting this tax, which has increased slightly over time. And that tax base has been critical because it's a stable funding source that allows us to do all the maintenance we need to do, which is tremendous on the conveyance systems and the existing ponds and low impact development facilities, as well as take on the larger projects like the dredging of lakes, the construction of new ponds, the construction of uh, stream restoration projects that cost a lot, of, a lot of money, plus just all the money it takes just to run a whole program itself, administrative component. But again, that tax-based funding was critical for our program to really uh, bring everything up to snuff and begin that maintenance cycle as well as putting in those new facilities that are necessary to clean the water. Partnerships are a critical part of our program. We work with a lot of entities, the schools, the parks, we work with housing services, we work with Private entities, in some cases, when we kind of consult on what they're putting in the ground, also to look at standards for those facilities. But in our case, partnerships are generally public entities where we work with them on their projects to add value. So we'll put things in that they're above what they're required to install in order to get additional benefit to get cleaner water, both in terms of nutrient reductions as well as total detention. Where we can use their construction cost that they're already paying, and we add on top of that for things that they don't have to do, and we reduce our cost because they already have a contractor on site. So those partnerships are really critical. So we're standing next to uh, a pond that was actually renovated by our program. And one of the things we try to do is look at new ways we can approach the stormwater problem. In this case, we look at older infrastructure that has ponds that were built to an older standard. And often they are dry ponds that just pass the water through. We call them peak shavers. So they shave off a peak of that storm, but they don't provide any water quality benefit per se. So things that we do that can be replicated by other jurisdictions are going to these older facilities and seeing how you can improve them. In this case, for a lower dollar investment, without touching the dam or the outflow structure, you can reshape the bottom and add a wetland component that's, that when those, that frequently recurring storm comes, where that really dirty half inch flows in, you can clean it through the wetland and maybe shrink that outflow orifice in order to hold that water a bit longer. We began developing watershed plans in the early 2000s. So from 2005 to 2011, we adopted 13 watershed plans. In those plans, we identified a whole suite of projects that we could do. So we use those as the basic foundation when we start looking at potential projects. But things have also changed over time. We get nominations from citizens, from elected officials, from partnering agencies, or our ecologists are out walking and they see something that's really degraded. So we use a lot of different inputs, and then we also run those by all the different stakeholders to make sure they're comfortable with where we're going on our projects. That's how it really arrives on the list in terms of becoming a project to build. So where we've arrived is we started out working in the uplands. We like to clean the water high in the watershed as possible, and starting with stormwater ponds and LIDs and things. But in reality, the streams are also receiving large quantities of water that we can't always control. And we found early on, especially with the Chesapeake Bay TMDL, that having to reduce nutrients and sediment, we found that streams were the one of the most efficient ways to do it. And if we don't start fixing the streams now, we just have increasing loads as we have these large amounts of water heading down. So it pushed us down to the stream valleys, and they've been cost effective. So by doing stream restoration, we're able to address those local TMDLs, which are becoming increasingly one of the biggest drivers for us 
as we're chipping away at those goals for the Chesapeake Bay TMDL. Well, one of the most critical things we do is engage residents and stakeholders. They are the backbone, really, of our program in the sense that if we don't have public support, it won't work. And they're the ones paying for it. These are their projects. This is their program. So what we really try to do is incorporate stakeholders whenever we can into our projects, but also communicate. Uh, if it's anything from a drainage complaint or we have inspectors going out, the inspectors communicate with the residents to tell them what's going on. If we have maintenance going on near residences, we try to really communicate with the residents to let them know what's going to happen and how long it's going to last. You know, those are big things for them. And whenever we have a big project, we try to really bring the stakeholders in. If they see themselves in the project and they, are, they see the processes that they are participating in and the outcomes it brings, they then will own that project and that, then they become an advocate. And I think it's that regular conversation that's the most important part. The thing we always love to hear is, is they thank us for listening or they thank us for calling them back or they thank us for contacting them in the first place. And that's really what, again, sells our program is keeping the residents involved, letting them be participate whenever we can and having them own the project and then promote the project for us. So I think other, other communities could consider when they're developing a program, you know, what is their mission? Who are they serving? What are their goals or requirements? And then what are the resources they have available? Because clearly you can't spend more than you have. And you also, you serve the, the residents. They're, it's their money, it's their program. So you have to be as transparent as possible and communicate with them. But generally you're looking for the highest value. Maintenance costs are critical. What can you actually maintain? And also working with your land development people. The land development regulators have a critical role in making sure that what's built is, the, is built correctly. And also then it comes into your system. And maybe you don't manage it directly, but you actually have to inspect it and make sure it works. So working really close with your land development folks and land regulators, as well as your stakeholders, looking at your budget and funding source, and making sure you're getting high value projects whenever you can. And the last thing I'd say is that in addition to partnerships, also look at how you can leverage different methods. It might be a new type of filtration system, uh, or it might be using wetlands to act in the bottom of a pond, which is as ancient as the world, to actually clean the water. So just looking at those things that provide the best value and uh, produce a product that cleans the water better, uh, provides an attractive component for the residents whenever possible, but also is maintainable and has a good value for the investment. Mm -hmm.